What's up guys, my name is Ace, and Season 5 for Call of Duty Vanguard is here, well, kind of here. We got our first update, which is typical, we kind of get the updates the day before the official season launches. And with this, at least in custom games, we have access to the brand new map called Beheaded, which we're seeing some gameplay just against bots in the background, because this isn't in public matches yet. But we get access to that in custom games, as well as three new weapons. The EX-1, the RA-225, as well as the Valois Revolver. And today, I just wanted to show off some gameplay of the new map, as well as some gameplay with each of these new weapons, as well as just sharing my initial impressions of all of this so far. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to my impressions of the guns, there will be much more detailed gun guides coming throughout the week, but those are going to take some time, especially with the EX-1. However, let's first talk about my thoughts on the map. This map is set right in New York City. You can see the Statue of Liberty has been destroyed and the head is right in the middle of the street and you can get inside the head. It's kind of like a little power position, some might call it. And then there is a little bit of an underground area as well. And my initial thoughts on this map, I would say it's a little on the cluttered chaotic side, at least based on my initial impressions. Now, I don't know how actual real players are going to play this map. And who knows, maybe it'll actually flow really well depending on the game mode and everything. But my initial thoughts on this is this is a lot of clutter and I feel like there's going to be a fair amount of like randomness within this map. Now for a game mode like Search and Destroy, I actually feel like this map is going to play very well. But for respawn game modes at least, my initial reaction to this is I don't think it's going to flow very well. But I am of course going to give it a chance. Time will tell. Maybe it will actually play better than I think. As far as the art style and the general theme and stuff, I think it's excellent. I love the look and the environment in this map. I think it's really cool what they did here. And this is a very unique Call of Duty map. Now, after that, let's talk a little bit about the new weapons and just my initial impressions of these after playing around with them just against bots in custom matches. And of course, we're gonna start this off with the World War II laser gun. This is the EX-1. And the first thing I noticed with this as I was going through the gunsmith is this is several guns in one. This isn't just like one gun and then you have some attachments that slightly change how it works. This gun has so many different attachments that completely changes the gun into a completely different style of weapon. So by default, it's technically an extremely high fire rate but low damage gun. It looks like it's firing a steady laser beam, but technically speaking, it is just coded as an extremely high fire rate weapon, and then it has that animation that makes it look like a laser. And that's exactly how the EM-1 was also created for Advanced Warfare. However, when you look at the barrels, you can turn this into a burst gun. You can also completely eliminate the slight charge up time that you have by default with the gun. You can also turn it into a semi-auto DMR with the Pwn Beam Condenser Barrel. And then we have the Charge Sniper Barrel as well, where it's a semi-auto gun, but if you just pull the trigger on an enemy player, you're dealing very minimal damage. However, if you hold down that trigger for a little bit and then release on target, this is where you can get that crazy good one-shot kill potential. And while they call this a charge sniper conversion, this also works really effectively as a shotgun. As long as you're charging it before approaching a target, this thing is really effective as a shotgun. So at the end of the day, the EX-1 is actually more like three or four different guns all built into one, depending on how you set it up in the gunsmith. And honestly, at this stage in the game's life cycle, I'm really happy to see something like this. Just something that is completely unique and interesting, totally changes how you approach the gameplay, depending on which attachments you're putting on this, of course. And this is something that's truly going to make the gameplay feel fresh, at least for a period of time. And I do feel like that's something Vanguard has been missing. Most of the weapons they bring in, it's just another assault rifle or SMG that performs just like the other assault rifles and SMGs in the game with some very slight modifications. So I am happy to see that this is actually providing a fresh gameplay experience, despite the fact that it is completely ridiculous and out of place in a World War II Call of Duty game. If this would have launched in Season 1, I think I probably would have been a little bit outraged, but we're in the final season of Vanguard. At this point, whatever. Throw whatever you want at us. As long as it makes for some fun gameplay, I'm totally on board. As for the new SMG, the RA-225, this is a fairly high fire rate SMG. It fires at 845 rounds per minute, so a little bit faster than the Thompson, but slower than something like the PPSH, for instance. And so far, just toying around with it against bots, this seems like quite a solid SMG to be using. Obviously, I'm going to dive a lot deeper into the individual stats to see how it actually stacks up against the other guns, but just based on feel, at least, it feels great, although not all that unique. It's just another SMG. 
Now finally we have the Valois Revolver, and with this there are no attachments to be used in the gunsmith, so that's quite interesting, it just is what it is. And with this, it's a melee weapon as well as a revolver, so you can shoot people with it, or you can kill in one hit with a melee, and that's sort of the gimmick behind this. And overall, that's how I see this gun. It's a bit of a gimmick if you are a melee-only type of a person, but you want that little bit of extra versatility where you can technically shoot back at enemy players as well, then this gun is for you. If you are trying to be very competitive though, this gun is nowhere even remotely close to competitive. Not only does it take three shots to kill with a fairly slow fire rate, it also seems to have a fairly noticeable double action delay, so when you pull the trigger, it doesn't actually fire immediately, and that can really easily throw off your aim when you're in a gunfight. So, not a very competitive gun, but it is a gimmicky gun that you might have some fun with. And there we go, that's gonna wrap it up. That's basically everything gameplay-wise for Season 5 of Vanguard. And overall, once again, this isn't an amazing amount of content or anything. They're kind of giving us the bare minimum. We're only getting one map at the beginning of the season. And so far, not the biggest fan of that. However, I will say I am very excited to be playing around with that EX-1, finding all sorts of different combinations to use and different ways to play with it. And hopefully I can get a gun guide together in not too long for that so you guys can understand more how this gun works. And with that, this is where I want to hear from you guys in those comments down below. First up, what are you guys thinking about the brand new map, Beheaded, that they added with Season 5 of Vanguard? And then finally, what are you guys thinking about the new weapons, especially that EX-1? Just let me know all of those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.